Thank you very much. Uh, I know you were quite prepared to take questions and response, but we do not have time for that. It is now time for member statements, and I recognize the member for Scarborough Southwest. Good morning, Speaker. Speaker, it is a true honour to rise on behalf of the amazing people of Scarborough Southwest. As we enter the holiday season, I would like to share a heartwarming story about the kindness and spirit of Scarborough Southwest. Over the past few weeks, Mr. Adams, a senior veteran, and Janet Stokes, a local support worker, personal support worker with the care company, have been working with community members from the neighborhood to secure supplies to help local organizations that help, that help those in need across Scarborough. Speaker, while the holiday festivities and, and you know, bring, festive, bring festivities and precious time with loved ones, it can also be very challenging. That, and it can also be a very challenging time for many families, especially given the year we have had. Mr. Adams is a World War II veteran who served as an Air Force pilot and wanted to find ways to bring joy and support to those who need it the most. He has set up a Christmas tree and some decorations on the front of his porch where neighborhoods and community members have been donating toys and food. They have partnered with the wonderful folks at our local Bluffs Food Bank and the care company to distribute these items towards the end of the month. So if you're hoping to donate some, please go to Mr. Adams' Christmas tree. So far, Mr. Adams' effort has yielded over 300 items. Speaker, this past year has been extremely difficult for our community members in Scarborough Southwest and across people, uh, people across this province. From community members losing loved ones to COVID-19 to many losing their livelihood because of the pandemic's impact. Despite these challenges, our community constantly came together to uplift one another, Speaker. Sometimes one person's kindness and determination have, become, have, have, been, have had huge impact on our communities, and that is why I'd like to dedicate my statement and time to the legislature, to Mr. Adams, and thank all the incredible leaders and community members who have been doing amazing work across our Scarborough Southwest neighborhoods. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. I recognize the member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud that our government is investing an additional $3 million in the David C. Onley Initiative to build the capacity of post-secondary institutions like Durham College in my writing to prepare local students with disabilities to transition into the workforce. Now, Speaker, this disinvestment will help extend supports to more learners through the creation of an online toolkit providing a comprehensive roadmap that more institutions can use to help students with disabilities. Through the initiative, we're leveraging key talent to help overcome critical labour shortages and strengthen our economy. Speaker, it's vital to empower students with disabilities as they prepare to enter the workforce, transitioning from post-secondary ed education into employment is a major milestone. Speaker institutions, employers throughout the region of Durham and government will continue to work together to remove barriers as students with disabilities plan their path to the workforce and to help position them for career success. This investment, Speaker, will allow these academic institutions like Terrell Tech University, Trent Durham and Durham College to continue to help graduates with disabilities enter and, importantly, Speaker, succeed in the working world. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements, I recognize the member for Kuwaitanong. Uh, speaker, I rise this morning to talk about the importance of preserving uh, residential school records. In October, the Prime Minister stated that all residential school records had been released. Uh, we knew that this was false, that there were more. Now more information will soon be released by the federal government. Uh, this is a very significant moment uh, for survivors and a major step towards accountability and truth about the legacy of Indian residential schools. It is also very important that we keep these records as they have proof of what happened. The United Nations uh, has principles which set out the standards for the treatment of survivors of human rights violations. The most important is being a community that has experienced collective uh, trauma has the right to remember and the right to justice. Ontario says that it has found 1,800 death registrations of school-aged children, Indigenous children, that have 
that it will release to the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation, identifying students, Indigenous students, who died away, who died away from home, uh, can be so complex, requiring a paper chase across many jurisdictions and institutions. Students uh, who became gravely ill, for example, uh, could have been sent to a, a variety of healthcare settings, such as local clinics, provincial hospitals, or federal Indian uh, hospitals. From uh, the time has come for all levels of government in this institution to turn over the records. We must support survivors and do everything we can to recover and remember our lost children and ancestors. Miigwech. Thank you. I recognize the member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, I was thrilled to join the Premier and the Minister of Health in Mississauga Lakeshore for a very special announcement. This government is making a historic multi-billion dollar investment to build a new state-of-the-art Mississauga Hospital in Mississauga Lakeshore. When it's completed, this will be the largest hospital in Canada with almost 1,000 hospital beds, one of the largest emergency departments in Canada, 23 operation rooms, an advanced diagnostic facility, a new pharmacy, a new clinical lab, and a new parking structure. Speaker, this will be the largest investment in hospital infrastructure in the history of Canada, a very significant part of our $30.2 billion plan to build, expand, and upgrade hospitals across Ontario. The current Mississauga Hospital first opened in 1958. I was born there. My sons were born there. But as Mayor Bonnie Crombie said, this pandemic brought a light on some real limit limitations of our current hospital. The truth is, Speaker, this investment should have been done 15 years ago by the former Liberal government, keeping, keep saying no. I can't tell you how proud I am. This Premier and this government said yes to this historic project. We're also building 632 long-term care beds in partnership with the Trillium Health Partners at a in a total of 1,152 new long-term care beds in Mississauga Lakeshore, more than any other riding in the province of Ontario. These projects are game-changers. They will help put an end to hallway health care for the people of Mississauga Lakeshore and across Peel and across Etobicoke as well. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize a member from Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Speaker. This morning, I'm excited to stand and share the news of my second annual food drive parade that will be happening on Sunday, December the 19th. The Santa Food Drive will begin at 11 a.m. and will be starting at Dave Anderchuk Arena and heading south. Donations will be happily collected from your porch or street site. Last year, we raised over a thousand pounds of food for our local food banks, and we had such a great turnout from our community. The donations raised from this year's food Food drive will be going to our local food banks, such as Neighbour to Neighbour, Good Shepherd, and the Kingsway Outreach Centre. Feed Ontario reported that 592,308 adults and children access food banks in Ontario between April 1, 2020 and March 31, 2021, an increase of over 10 per cent in the last year and the largest single increase since 2009. Our neighbours need us. They need various non-perishable food items, such as cereal, oatmeal, canned fruit, granola bars, to as well as toiletries, diapers, and feminine hygiene project products, just to name a few. So please donate generously this holiday season. We'll be joined by our local firefighters and our pal Stripes from the Tiger Cats, as and of course, our dear friend Santa who always graciously joins us in Hamilton Mountain. Volunteers are welcome to attend, so if you're interested in joining us, please reach out to my office and we will uh, make sure that you get all the information that you need. Next Sunday's food drive is going to be a fantastic event and we look forward to coming to your community, so don't miss out. Speaker, finally, I just want to wish all members of the Legislative Assembly a very happy holiday. Merry Christmas to all people across Ontario and particularly in my riding of Hamilton Mountain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Ottawa Vanier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The holiday season is upon us, and I want to recognize a great initiative in my community that brings the community together every year around this time to raise funds for the Partage Vanier Food Bank. It was a pleasure again this year to take part to the Snowflakes Breakfast with my team. 
The generosity of the people of Ottawa Vanier once again made this event another great success, raising $48,000 for the food bank. The partners communitaires who organized this our community partners that organized the second edition gifted breakfast boxes that could be collected and that was featuring products of local partners. It's a pillar in our community. The, the chair of this community spent 30 years of leadership and dedication towards this community. I would like to thank him and honor him and wish him a very long retirement. And I know that all of us here are hoping that every Ontarian finds a safe place to sleep and nutritious meals. Although raising money for food banks is incredibly important, as legislators, we need to work constructively together to find long-lasting solutions. As we all head back to our homes and constituencies, I want to wish everyone a great holiday quality time with your loved ones, and the start of the New Year's with renewed motivation to work in collaboration for the best interest of all Ontarians. Happy holidays, everyone. Joyous fight. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Markham Thornhill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tomorrow, December 9th, is an international day of commemoration and the dignity of the victims of the crime of genocide and the prevention of this crime. Mr. Speaker, today I rise to honor the victims and the survivors of genocide living in Ontario, in Canada, and across the world. From the Armenian genocide to the Holocaust, to the Bosnian, Rwandan, and indigenous genocide, and more recently, the genocide in Darfur, in Sri Lanka against the town-speaking people, and of the Rohingya people and Uyghur Muslims. Time and time again, the world said never again, but the world and the United Nations failed over and over again. Mr. Speaker, the horror of genocide and ethnic cleansing have flagged history and cruelly taken away the life of so many innocent human beings. Marginalized groups have been and continue to be targeted of their identity. The heinous crime is born out of hate, discrimination, and fundamental violation of human rights. Mr. Speaker, we have a moral obligation to protect and uphold the principle of quality, equality, and human dignity. Our words and action is matter. As Eli Weissel once said, what hurt the victim most is not the cruelty of the oppressor, but the silence of the bystander. Let us say never again and commit fully to preventing another genocide from ever happening again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Sudbury. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I recently went to visit Sudbury Secondary's Value Vault. I was invited by Janine Hebert. Uh, Janine is an educational assistant, and she's part of the team running Sudbury Secondary's Life Skills Program. When I arrived, Janine introduced me to Dave Bertram, the school's principal, and Lori Leger, who Janine described as the driving force behind the Value Vault initiative. And if Laurie is the driving force, then you have to acknowledge the students in Sudbury Secondary's Life Skills ASD program speaker because those students are the heart and soul of the Valley Vault. Without them, it simply wouldn't be as well organized and as available as it is. And you might be wondering, what is the Value Vault speaker? It's, it's like a food bank, but it's so much more. They have perishable and non-perishable foods, but they also have clothing, hygiene products, and household items. And they also offer students the use of washing machines and a dryer. And obviously, it's designed for students in need but it's also in use by all students at Sudbury Secondary. During my tour, there were students stopping by to grab snacks before their practice, others looking for a toque or warm gloves, still others who wanted a reusable water bottle or some food to bring home. And the whole place was warm and welcoming without even a hint of stigma. It truly is a model to be proud of and copied, except, and, and let's be honest, Speaker, students from lower income families wouldn't have the need for food banks like the Value Vault if successive, successive Liberal and Conservative governments would stop pretending that a single mom with two children can survive on a thousand bucks a month from OW. If we're going to copy models like the Value Vault, and I think that we should, let's ensure they're a place to get extra snacks and not a place that our children must depend on because their bellies are empty. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Centre. 
Thank you very much, Speaker. As a nurse, I always appreciate hearing from the members of my profession on how our government can support nursing across Ontario. Two weeks ago, I was pleased to join several of my caucus colleagues for a virtual roundtable with the Registered Practical Nurses Association of Ontario, or WERPN for short. Over 95% of registered practical nurses provide direct care to patients in our province, and we were much appreciate hearing their perspective directly. The topic of the roundtable was facing the nursing and retention challenge head-on, a crucial subject as we seek to both attract and retain talented nurses in Ontario. Earlier this year, our government announced the new $2 million recruitment and retention initiative program as part of our 2021 budget to be del delivered directly by WERPN. The program will provide financial incentives for eligible nurses and PSWs to work in Ontario retirement homes for six months to one year. Above all, Speaker, we enjoyed a productive discussion, and the rich input and perspectives from the WE RPN members will inform our government's next steps in addressing this challenge. Thank you to the WE RPN CEO, Diane Martin, the board, and frontline members who hosted and spoke at the event. Our government remains committed to meaningful and constructive dialogue with Ontario's nurses as we work towards our shared goal of providing the best possible care for patients in Ontario. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I'm very pleased to inform the House that Paige Rishi Bargava from the riding of Etobicoke North is one of today's page captains, and we have with us today at Queen's Park her mother, Kamel Bargava. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We are delighted to have you here.